Thank you very much, Dr. Bandari and the Vatikuti Foundation for um, asking me to come here to uh, Delhi. It's always a pleasure. And first off, I must say I was surprised by Dr. Bandari asking me to give this talk. Uh, by way of disclosures, I should say I haven't done a lot of thermal ablation. I've done about 14 to 15 cases in England and about two or three RFAs in, in America, but not, not more than that. Uh, but but uh, I'll tell you, uh, then I suddenly realized the relevance of this topic. Um, I'll, I'll tell you the reasons why. This used to be my favorite slide. Everywhere I go, I'd put this on because robotic surgery was pretty new. Uh, in our country, and we'd give talks to the IMA, Indian Medical Association people, and doctors, and, and uh, we'd get a wide range of doctors. Doctors from people, uh, doctors saying, are you doing the surgery, or are the robots doing the surgery, till doctors would say, ask about warm ischemia, and so on. So my, my main plan could be, so we would save the kidney and, and take only the tumor out, and so on. And then, until suddenly, one fine day, a radiologist in the audience got up and said, hey, we're doing this percutaneously. Okay, um, it's much more minimally invasive than what you guys are doing. And so, so I think it's time to revisit this. At least conventional thinking was when we were taught uh, it was uh, thermal ablation, which includes warmth, uh, that is uh, microwave, RFA, and then cold, which is cryo. It was given to older patients, patients with significant comorbidities, and guys with genetic predispositions to form more tumors, and imperative indications for nephron sparing surgery. Now, the basis of these recommendations was lack of long-term oncological data. We didn't know whether thermal ablation was good enough and unreliability of measures of treatment efficacy. Um, and higher rates of local recurrence. So why is the deb debate coming in again? Obviously, we've shifted over from laparoscopic thermal ablation to percutaneous approaches now. Uh, and, and the radiologists or the intervention radiologists are up in arms saying, guys, we're doing this much more minimally invasively than you are. And it is definitely considered much more nerve sparing than partial nephrectomies. And if the efficacy is similar to partial nephrectomy, why shouldn't it supplant it, especially in poor risk patients? So having said that, are we sure it's there for the prime, uh, prime time? Is it ready for prime time? Well, the American Neurological Association says right now, Local tumor recurrence is much more likely than with surgical excision. So again, there's a caveat there. And the European Neurological Association, again, has no recommendations that could be made on RFA as well as cryo at present. So how do we compare the efficacy of a surgical versus non-surgical modalities? Now, we can grade it based on the minimal invasiveness, uh, perioperative outcomes, complications, <coughs> nephron sparing potential, and cancer-specific as well as overall-specific and ease of follow-up. Now, to be honest, the data that we have right at now, at present, is not very robust. We've got a couple of good retrospective studies um, and, and um, uh, some meta-analysis, but there's no good randomized prospective uh, control trial. So let's look at perioperative outcomes. I'm, I've just taken the lab cryo data here because it would be unfair to compare uh, percutaneous cryo with uh, partial nephrectomy. Now, with the operative time, it was about 34 times shorter uh, cryotherapy, and estimated blood loss 130 ml shorter. Obviously, there was no, not much need of uh, um, dissection uh, in, the, in the percutaneous uh, era, but when we did the lab cryos, we usually did do the entire dissection up until like the exact partial nephrectomy that we do, artery and vein, and, and then the uh, geratus phasia as well. Length of stay, uh, again, uh, weighted mean difference was about 1.2 days, and the complications uh, risk ratio was 1.8 times higher in, in uh, partial nephrectomy. So what sort of complications are we getting? Uh, we were getting more bleeding, naturally, because there was no cutting in terms of in the, uh, the renal parenchyma when we were thinking of uh, cryo and RFA. And urinary leaks were much higher with uh, partial nephrectomies, but non-neurological complications as well, like thromboembolic manifestations were higher with partial nephrectomy. So again, all these perioperative data show that uh, uh, the thermal ablation kind of wins. But when we come to oncological outcomes, especially with this study, um, local progression relative risk ratio was about 9.3 times higher for cryoablation when you compare to partial nephrectomies. Again, uh, metastatic progression, again, was higher as well. 
But this is not the norm. This is a meta-analysis that's shown us this data. But if you look at the Mayo study that came out recently, uh, where they compared partial nephrectomy versus RFA and cryo, the metastasis-free survival over a long period of time, more than six years, was not that different uh, for partial and uh, RFA and cryo. But the overall survival did make a difference. Uh, but that could be because uh, traditionally we've been taking higher risk patients, high comorbidities, and they could have died due to other reasons, or they could have died before they got metastasis. Could be interpreted in any way. So, but for all practical purposes from this study, T1A tumors, we were seeing substantially similar results compared to partial nephrectomy. When you did, uh, when they looked at T1B tumors, they did not do any RFAs. Okay, that's a trend that I'm seeing in all the literature review that I did. Uh, less than three centimeters, three centimeters and less RFA is kind of uh, preferred, but more than three centimeters, or up to four, five centimeters, cryo can be done. So when they looked at T1B tumors, metastasis free survival again was not different, but overall survival is different, but that could be again due to selection criteria. Now what are the common limitations of all these studies? Number one is there is no robust data. We have to accept that. Um, and generally older, higher risk patients underwent thermal ablation, and such selection bias at entry could affect the primary survival outcomes. Now, there's also another concept of skip lesions in, in uh, RFA, especially when you're using monopolar RFA. Uh, that this is obviated when you use bipolar or multipolar, or multi-frequency RFA. But again, skip lesions are a major issue. And difficulties with follow-up. How do you follow up these patients? Well, some radiolog interventional radiologists have a protocol of doing a CT in a week's time. Others do it in a month's time. They look for Peri, uh, peritumoral rim enhancement if it is present or any enhancement in the lesion. Again, there is no consensus on how to follow up these patients. Now let's look at if the approach makes a difference. Obviously, percutaneous will make a huge difference. Patients come in, get a percutaneous RFA or cryo, and then go home in 24 hours. It's done under local anesthesia, no need for anesthesia. Um, and, and complications rates are lower with percutaneous approach. But there's one major caveat. The recurrence rates are higher with percutaneous when you compare it with laparoscopic RFA or cryo. That's understandable, primarily because when we used to do lap cryo, uh, that was way back in 2009, they used to have these big needles from the Israeli company with that when you put it in, uh, it forms a huge big ice ball, and when you take it out, the area where the needle comes out starts to bleed. So that, that was an issue. And again, how to, how to follow up the ice ball was another issue as well. But the recurrence rates for lab cryo were much better than percutaneous cryo. Again, the orientation of the needle was important. We should orient it exactly in the axis of the tumor. That was something that was, is a bit more difficult when you look, do it percutaneously. The other considerations are definitely both uh, radio frequency and cryo have better nephron sparing potential. This has been proved in various studies. Uh, the next thing that I personally dislike is uh, whenever we think of uh, entities like HIFU and the cryo and RFA, we have a turf battle between the interventional radiologists. The way I look at it is those guys do the surgery or the intervention, but they're not capable of managing the complications. So in effect, what happens is the patient gets admitted under the urologist, those guys do it, and we do the follow-up, which is not something that I'm very comfortable with. Um, difficulties with follow-up is, is, again, there's no consensus. And difficulties with demarcation of the ice ball. Now, when we used to do lap cryo, a CT, it, the ice ball that's formed is very well visualized on CT, so percutaneously you won't have much of a problem. But when you do lap cryo, you place the ultrasound probe either this side, that side, and somebody says the ice ball's gone beyond the, the tumor. We also have to place a probe that tells us the temperature because the kidney is not clamped. There's a heat sink. The blood goes in and comes out, and that acts as a massive heat sink. We're not sure whether the, the, the distal edge of the tumor is being touched or not. That's another major point of contention for me. For instance, when we do partial nephrectomies, now we, we go in, we take the tumor out, and we have a margin. The pathologist tells us, well, listen, your margins are free, and we're happy telling the patient, guys, we've taken out your tumor. That doesn't mean you won't get another one, but this tumor is gone completely you have negative margins. But that's not the same confidence with which we can talk to patients after RFA or cryo. But how does it go when you compare RFA and cryo? But cryo has more laparoscopic data, RFA has more percutaneous data, and as I said, 3.5 centimeters is kind of the limit that the RFA guys would want to go to, but it's much, much cheaper than the cryo machine. 
Um, you know, these, all these vascular surgeons have bought uh, RFAs for varicose veins. Apparently, the same machine with a bit of modification can be used for uh, renal RFA as well. And the recurrence free survival for cryo is slightly better. Again, depends on which study you look at. And larger tumor volumes are being treated. Now, before I finish and, and uh, give my opinion on what I think is the way forward, let me give you a slight example of what we're doing at Chennai. In the last one year and nine months, we've been able to do 77 partial nephrectomies. And, and uh, um, the, the point that I'd like to make on immediate post-operative characters, intraoperative characteristics is it's only in 64% of the patients we needed to clamp the vein. We never clamp the vein if it is absolute. We use uh, the AV fistula bulldogs that we get, not those Canlon clamps primarily because they're more expensive. We don't have it. So when we use that, we generally find it doesn't hold as perfectly as um, the Scanlon clamps. So we have to use two or three clamps uh, altogether. And I find that if the vein is clamped, the bleeding is a bit more. So we generally don't clamp the vein at all. And the need for transfusion has been zero. And we're slowly migrating to towards uh, doing T1B, T2A surgeries. Our last few cases have been more on higher nephrometric uh, patients. And positive surgical margin still now has been only one case. So in order to conclude, I'd like to say that T1A tumors, cryoablation, RFA, appears to be a safe procedure with lesser complications, better outcomes in terms of hospital stay and blood loss. But the oncological outcomes are definitely inferior at present to partial nephrectomy in terms of local recurrence, uh, metastasis, and overall survival. Could be due to different selection bias, study criteria, but the honest answer is we do not have a proper study to say this. But if you go into larger tumors, T1B, above, and higher nephrometry T1A tumors, I would definitely steer clear of um, RFA and cryo and go in for partial nephrectomy. Thank you. Thank you very much.